Welcome back guys. Today I'll be initiating a three-part series on the nervous system. So if you are a biology, human and social biology, or an integrated science student, you might want to stick around because this video will definitely boost your readiness for your upcoming CSEC examination. and welcome to the human nervous system. The nervous system is a collection of cells, tissues, and organs that coordinates movement, posture, thinking, learning, homeostasis, and so much more. I have here today the organization of the human nervous system. This system is divided into the central nervous system, and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system processes information from the entire body and coordinates activities too. Two important organs found in the central nervous system are largely responsible for this. Yes, the brain and the spinal cord. The brain is an organ that is found in the head and that sits in a protective structure called the skull. The brain also has several important parts that enables it to play important functions like interpreting sensory information and coordinating movements. The spinal cord, on the other hand, sits in a protective structure called the vertebral column. It extends downward from the back of the neck and can be subdivided into cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and sacral parts. In addition, it is made up of the nerve cord, spinal nerves, and cranial nerves. Let's move over to the peripheral nervous system. The peripheral nervous system is further divided into two different systems, the autonomic nervous system and the somatic nervous system. Let's talk about these systems a little bit more. The autonomic nervous system is largely responsible for involuntary actions. Involuntary actions or activities in the body that we can't control, like heart rate, respiration, digestion, and pupil movement. Importantly, the autonomic nervous system is divided into the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system, also called fight or flight, because it's activated in situations where we're fearful or we're ready to fight, prepares the body for metabolic processes. Yes, like increasing the heart rate, increasing the blood glucose concentration, dilating the pupil, and also releasing the hormone adrenaline. On the other hand, the parasympathetic nervous system, also called rest and digest, because it conserves the body's energy. It is activated when the body is not experiencing stress or disturbances. As of such, the parasympathetic nervous system therefore decreases the heart rate, decreases the blood glucose concentration, decreases digestion and peristalsis and exocrine secretions. Lastly, the somatic nervous system. Unlike the autonomic nervous system, which is responsible for involuntary actions, the somatic nervous system regulates voluntary movements or activities in the body that we can control, like cooking or riding a bicycle. 
and you can also find neurons here sensory and motor neurons of the peripheral nervous system well guys thanks so much for watching this introductory video now that you are abreast with the organization of the human nervous system get ready for part two where we'll talk about two important structures of the nervous system remember to like share and subscribe bye